I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby here with Rosalind Chow. Rosalind, three-body problem, number one series in the world right now. How does that make you feel that the rest of us are catching up with what you already knew, that this show is brilliant, groundbreaking and addictive? I have been in love with this show actually ever since we were filming it and it was so hard to keep it a secret. I had to keep so much secret and for those of you who haven't seen it, um, I guess I still have to keep it a secret, but you understand why it was, there's everything in this show. There's, it's not just sci-fi. It's, you know, there's a love story. There's, you know, the mother, daughter regrets. Um, there's just, there's so much in there, the environment, you know, there's nothing that they don't cover. I feel like. Yeah, and there's so many parallels to our everyday life. Too. That's right. And it's got a lot of really hard sci-fi. It's also sometimes quite funny. It's terrifying. And it's it's really deep. It's existential, I find. And I really enjoyed going on that journey, which made me think about lots of issues that perhaps maybe we're dealing with today. Yes. Um, yeah, so look. I, once or twice? Um, twice. Yeah. <laughs> It takes a couple times. Even for me, I had read the script, but it took a couple times for me to really, um, you know, get the depth of it all. Yeah. They're brilliant. So they, you know, they're able to explain it, but you don't really understand it until it's all pieced together. Um, That's right. Like, yeah. You need to go through the whole season to see how it ends and then go back to get all the things that you missed because there's so much telegraphing that you don't even know it's telegraphed at the time. <laughs> so, exactly. um, yeah, it was thoroughly enjoyable. I'm be, I'm going to get really impatient now and just say, hurry up, make season two, and hopefully you'll be in it. Um, any idea if you'll ever return? No. You don't know yet, right? No, I don't know because, as you know, you know, the end is the end. And uh, this is, um, you know, previous to that year, that was, when did we film it? 2022. I really didn't do series work because, you know, I had a fan, you know, I have a family. And um, so I didn't really sign on for, uh, I, once we started this past season, I did um, Sweet Tooth and this. Mm. Um, I signed on both just for one year. Um, I, I had a very, you know, I'm always afraid to sign on for too long because I, I feel like my acting could kind of get a little mushy if I do, yeah. uh, uh, you know, characters for too long. Same thing with Star Trek. I didn't, you know, even though they wanted me to sign on longer, I just, I was always, I'm always concerned that um, I'm going to get uh, too comfortable and it's good yeah. for me to not be too comfortable. And three body problem was about as uncomfortable as I could be in a character. To be yeah. I mean, to find you, to find something that's really going to stretch you as an artist, I think you could not have found something more complex and diverse and interesting. What actually made you want to sign on with Weiss, Benioff and Wu, uh, a, a, tr oh, yeah. a trio of, amazing artists who have brought this show together well even if the role wasn't good i you know i'd be tempted to sign on just after i met them but i think they had um alex uh explain the story and the character to me in a meeting and you know immediately i i um, his, David's first question was, how would you feel about being aged up? Because I think, I think they came to me through Nina Gold and Robert because, um, the casting people, because I'd done a play in England where I aged from, uh, I guess 30 to 80. And, um, so when we had our meeting, he said, how do you feel like, you know, it's not going to be pretty, um, and so, and I was chomping at the bit because I wasn't thinking about, you know, the practicality of the hour and a half every day and painting hair and all that and making more wrinkles. Um, I was just thinking about how juicy it is to play a character that's so far from you. Um, you know, 
Ye is um, quite uh, stoic. She really does not, she's not very, she's very indirect in her way of dealing with people. And um, I am the opposite, as you can probably tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, like, so, I, I saw that you said that on social media, you are, uh, you pay tribute to your makeup, the makeup team on the show, the transforming you into an elderly Ye. And, uh, and you said, who says it's no fun getting old? So did you actually like being a, a really old lady on the show? You know what? People are nicer to you when you're an old lady. <laughs> realized. <laughs> Honestly, because, you know, I noticed like if when I was dressed in the whole garb and the outfit, you know, the PAs would have a flashlight and walk me to the bathroom or whatever. And when I look like that, they're like, oh, I'll say, I'd say, you know, I'm going to head to the bathroom. Okay. You know, they, they didn't care if I fell flat on my face. <laughs> but, you know, the thing that was really interesting is they did not wig me. They painted me according to the lighting and um, they used a paint box and then alcohol to remove it from my head every single day um so I really got to know them well there was you know quite a span of time we got it down to 90 minutes no latex what they would do is have me scrunch my face and then put this stuff in to glue it together so some of those lines I think may have stayed a little bit but it's worth it, you know, totally and, and how's the acting, you know, when you see yourself like that, it really, it, it just helped everything, the costumes, everything, it all feeds into the character, it was juicy, it was a really fun, a hard work, the most, uh, probably the hardest working job I've ever had, because we had to condense it. Um, all my scenes into two months. Everybody else had been on it for like almost two years, I think. But mine had to be content condensed into two months because I was doing another Netflix show. And um, so it was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah, it, it does sound like a lot. And of course, there's so much to unpack. I'm going to go straight to, I think, the most pivotal scene in the whole show, which I didn't realise at the time. I'm sure you've talked about it ad nauseum, but, um, you know, conceptually, how the whole scene at the cemetery was executed really blew me away. Um, and, you know, we're going to have spoilers now, so people, if you haven't seen the show, go away, go watch the show, come back. <laughs> um, it came together for me at that scene when Ye is talking to Dr. Saul Durand and she asks, would you like to hear a joke? And then tells his cautionary tale, um, which I've done so much reading about because it's really interesting to me how this concept about the Fermi paradox and the dark forest. Um, what were your initial thoughts about the scene in the lead up to filming it? I begged for them to cut it. I mean, honestly, I, I did not because they did not explain it to me initially. Um, and it's so funny because I thought you were going to say two other scenes I thought you oh were we're going to talk about them too <laughs> um, it's interesting that's how I can tell you're really um into it um so initially when I saw do you want to hear a joke and she tells a joke I thought shouldn't it at least be a little bit funny and I didn't get it and I think I talked to we had I had a zoom rehearsal with Jeremy and uh, Jovan, and I think I mentioned it then, and Jeremy said, yeah, I I don't know this. I, I'm not sure this is going to be in there. And then um, we had a Zoom with David, and I kept saying, um, David, do, do you mind? Um, uh, can you just, can we just cut? And he's like, no, no. So they explained it a little bit, but it wasn't till that day when we filmed it. It was one of the hottest days, uh, you know, I think in history in England. So we were in a turtleneck and all that. And I remember as Dan started to go through all the details of the Fermi paradox and all that and how this leads into if there is a season two and Saul becoming, um, uh, you know, a wall facer, that it's her last uh, hint. Um, 
I understood more, but I do remember as he was explaining to me, I actually felt like passing out because it was so dense what he was explaining as you know, now that you've done the research. Um, it was so dense that I, I really, and then I kind of went over it in my head again, thinking, well, now knowing the details of this, I kind of have to play it differently than I had originally planned. Um, the sun was setting and we we're losing light. I think we got like one take. Wow. That was, yeah, that was a miracle. And we've had a few of those little miracles there where, you know, the things worked out. Um, yeah. I was glad I learned it really well because yeah. if I screwed that up, that would have been really bad. Let's do it again. Um, but yeah. it's so like, you know, you know, this show doesn't hold your hand and give you the answers. You've really got to figure it out yourself to some extent. And it requires you to be more actively engaged in the show's narrative, which I find, it, which can be quite difficult for some people who just want to stare at their phone while watching the TV. That's no, fine. You can't play words can't with friends. That. You do that it. cannot um and so you know the sofons are listening so the joke has to be a joke but it's really you know about curiosity killing the cat and not playing with god the sun tea uh, so i just find all that stuff so fascinating and they did not change a word in that one you know every once in a while if you say a va of instead of a the you know, Dan or David or Alex would walk up and say, oh, th that is intended to be an of, you know, but it sounds better this way. So go for it, you know, but this yeah. one, not one word could be changed. And not that I ever asked for it no. to be early on. I did. I, I didn't understand. So I kept saying, shouldn't we just cut this a little? Because I was afraid I have egg on my face. You know, I didn't really understand the concept of it at that time. Wow. But now, I mean, now I really get it. And it's, and I mean, also the way they edited it too, to give, they didn't hold back from um, all those hints I'm giving him with my eyes, but trying to not overdo it. So it's comical. You know what I mean? It's, um, yeah. Yeah. Really like trying. You've just hit the nail on the head because I find your performance in this show to me is so compelling because of all the nonverbal cues that you're doing throughout that I really noticed on my second watch. The oh. joke is an attempt to alert Saul, of course, to the dark forest concept, but she's the only real human being to know the weight of what she did years ago back in China. And that weighs on her. And it's yeah. so apparent in the way you speak, look, your gait, oh, your body yeah. language. And so I'm wondering how much work you did on that aspect of your performance. I'm so grateful to you for saying that because I'm not used to, first of all, I don't watch myself usually because I like the experience. I don't want the experience to be pooped on by me, you know, being self-critical because I can always see something I can do better. And honestly, um, when I first watched it, because she's so stoic, it was really hard for me to um, enjoy yet because I felt I, I couldn't, there is so much going on with her that they would, you know, I was being guided by Dan, Dave and Alex and the directors, um, Minky and um, Jeremy. And uh, it was just because of the fact that that veil had to be on her at all times and um, could not even, even in the moment in the bedroom, I remember thinking, I think this is a private moment. This is when it can all, you know, and they were like, nope, because you're just about to make that phone call to Sal, you're still a can do. Or in the, in the prison, the last scene with um, uh, Benny, uh, you know, it, that was really hard for me when he talks about my daughter and in real life, I do have a daughter and it was really hard for me to not just, you know, my nose is running, my eyes are running and we have to go back and just try and, you know, rein her in. And that for me, that was really, that was the hardest work. Normally as an actor, you know, it's good to let things out and, 
Um, and I think a lot of people struggle with that. I struggled with the blocking it off. And um, I definitely remember saying to the boys at one point, they were at the uh, monitor and they were like, Roz, too much, too much. <laughs> All learning. And I remember saying, I can't stop. <laughs> and uh, they had to give me a moment to try you know, but it, yeah, yeah it was, it's a team effort. It's always a team effort. So I yeah. thank you so much for saying that because it um, it just makes me feel like it wasn't, I wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a stone, you know? No. I mean, at the funeral, whatever, uh, the memorial, yes, I thought, what's, what's going on with her? What's her problem? <laughs> and of course, afterwards, I'm like, yeah, she has to keep it under wraps. Um, you know, but... At the Red Coast, I think it's episode seven. It's a beautiful episode directed by the amazing Jeremy Podeswa. And you're with um, Arlo Kelly, another fellow Aussie. And um, Yeah, we love those Aussies. We love them. She, that scene is so good because finally, yeah, you can just kind of let it go a little. I mean, she can be honest and open and it's so emotional. Um, the Santi have to take her out and she knows that. So was that a particularly emotionally challenging scene to get right, not to overplay, not to underplay? What was going on then? Well, once again, that was um, that was my first day of work. Wow, so, really? Yeah, because uh, I had um, for me to take the job, I didn't want to miss my daughter's graduation, and they worked. They changed the dates of the mountain to make that work, which to me you know, that was pretty amazing that they did that. And so I really did not want to screw up. Um, and as much as you think you have a handle on the character, I, you know, you don't really until you've finished at least one scene. And that first scene, to have that first scene be on the cliff, her last scene was a little scary also, um, the weather was not cooperating because they wanted that shot. I can't remember. Did they get the shot of the sun at the end? I thought um, they did. Yeah, I think they got it. But there was, um, and it was cloud cover the whole time. So you couldn't even tell we were in that beautiful environment for some of the shots. But then the clouds parted, literally, because it was so windy. Um, that was the other thing. It was really hard for that that scene between us and at the last minute when I put my head on her shoulder I thought the sun's going we're not I'm you're trying to not think about all the technical stuff but we knew we had one day on that mountain and you can't erase it from your head unfortunately and the clouds parted and the sun that orb came out so it was I, I did feel like a little charmed whereas when we were standing on the cliff I thought oh my god with the wind and it, it was you know not um it they were very safe they were cautious but you know I being how I am I kept thinking oh I could just go a little bit further closer to the edge and they wouldn't let me but um no. yeah that was that was technically challenging but yeah, Jeremy, and he's he's so calm. That's the thing. When he's, I even told him this that when he's uh, directing you, you actually it's. I told him it's almost like if you had a really good doctor who comes up to you and tells you, you know, uh, so you have to eat this and maybe take this many. Or it's, uh, I don't even go to doctors very often, but <laughs> I'm imagining. <laughs> yeah. 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 He has that calm demeanor when he talks to you. So, um, and we had an amazing camera crew. Um, Dave, our um, our steady cam guy, was very steady and just you know, it's a team effort. It really is. But still, they definitely wanted even in that moment, and that was the beginning. So I didn't know where everything else was going. So in that moment, yes, yeah, still had to have her guard up because the senti can see and hear everything and she doesn't want to give up. You know, she's still yeah. she's still fighting, even though it's the end, but she's I think she's fighting to the very end. We are as well, because I kept thinking they're not gonna kill her off. They're gonna keep Rosalind Chowing for however yes. many seasons. 
no, the Santi don't muck around. And so it's it's a really it's really devastating. But that scene goes to show that experience really does mean a lot. And Jeremy being an experienced director, you being in the industry for so long now. Um, Marlo is more of a newcomer, but um, yeah, beautiful scene. It worked really well. I think it's probably the best, one of your best scenes in the whole show. Oh. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but I mean, I could oh. just keep running for hours, but one final non-three-body problem question, yeah. and that is because obviously Kiko O'Brien um, from The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, one of, uh, you know, a fan favourite for many, uh, including myself, uh, you haven't been on, you haven't played her since 1999 in the episode uh, mm -hmm. What You Leave Behind. And so given the recent Picard series reunion, I was wondering whether you ever think about her and what would she be doing now? Gosh, I, I, is it terrible to say I don't? I know no. I don't about her isn't that terrible no um, she's a distant memory now yeah i mean if even that because at the time you know honestly at one point there was a little uh game quiz at one of lavar burton's um reading rainbow fundraisers and they had a game as to how much you remembered from past episodes that you'd done and i failed i lost <laughs> by a mile i i honestly i i don't remember a lot of it. I'm not a huge sci-fi fan, as I've said so many times. Um, but you know, the next generation had a a life to it that wasn't just sci-fi. And I feel this too. And when you play sci-fi, you do have to take out all the non-human element, make everything human. Yeah, grounded. Yeah. Paper. Yeah, you have to ground it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well. Rosalind, thank you for your time today. Congratulations on some really amazing work in Three Body Problem, and hopefully uh, we'll see you again for your next project. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure.